Hey guys, Tony here, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at the brand new X3000i from BenQ, which has been specifically designed for gaming, but I'm also going to see how it performs as a home theater projector and go over all of the pros and cons, as well as calibrate it with my sensor as this projector has calibration controls and the results absolutely blew me away. So make sure you hit the like button for me and stay tuned as we take a look at the BenQ X3000i. So right out of the box, we have this interesting cube shaped design. It's actually bigger and much heavier than I was expecting from the website photos. It weighs in at 6.4 kilograms. And what I really like about this projector is that you can mount it in a variety of ways. You can use these mounts here to hang it from the ceiling, or you can use the adjustable feet if you want to put it onto a shelf. So you can have it this way up, but you can also mount it this way so that it's aiming down using these little pegs here. And these are adjustable and they're magnetic mounted so that you can clip them on. And the reason that you might want to have it this way around is that this projector has a 110 degree viewing angle. So depending on the height of your shelf, you might need to either angle it forward or tilt it upwards so that it reaches the screen properly. Now, I did have to do keystone adjustments mainly because in my theater room, I couldn't move things around. I have a shelf up for my dedicated projector and there is no lens shifting option either, but there are manual focus and adjustments here with a little slider, you can see you can change the focus and the zoom. And the reason that I think that they did this was to keep the cost down because this projector is only 2000 US dollars or 3299 Australian dollars, which for what this projector can do is a very affordable price. If you wanna get the best experience for gaming, BenQ would do advise not to use the key staining options as it will affect the performance slightly. So installation requires the BenQ dongle. You can install it on the inside of the projector to hide it away so it's not sticking out at the back. You can use this projector simply as a display connected to your receiver, but the dongle does have Android TV OS built into it so that you can use Netflix and all of the usual things that you get on an Android TV OS device. The remote is nice and solid, but it isn't backlit, which is a shame because you're gonna be using this in a home theater environment. It is pretty solid and easy to use and has both the projector controls and the Android TV controls integrated on it instead of having two separate remotes like you did with the V1750i. So before I get into the pros and cons of this projector and who I think it's designed for, let's have a quick look at the specs as there are a few surprises. First of all, we have the BenQ 4 LED light engine, which is reported to have a converted 3000 ANSI lumens and I can tell you that this projector is very bright. 4 LED technology involves adding a blue LED pump which adds additional blue light which is then converted to green light which increases the overall brightness. We have a contrast ratio of 500,000 to 1, although I will show what I measured the on to off contrast ratio a little later in the video. We also have a reported 20,000 hours of use, which is nice for those extended gaming sessions. The projector is also pretty quiet, which is another benefit of having an LED light source. The projection system is using a DLP chip, but for those who want to know, I didn't notice any of the rainbow effect, but if I'm completely honest, I don't think I've ever noticed any projector I've ever reviewed to have the rainbow effect as my eyes are just not susceptible to it. There is a native aspect ratio of 16 by 9, although this projector can also do 2.40 to 1 and 4 by 3. We have a native resolution of 4K UHD with 3840 by 2160 and with gaming mode enabled we get 4K 60Hz with 6 milliseconds response time and at 1080p 240Hz refresh rate you get 8 milliseconds so this projector is an absolute beast when it comes to gaming. This projector does support up to 100% of the DCI-P3 color space, allowing you to extend the HDR mode using a mechanical filter that snaps into place. The dynamic range is surprisingly very nice for a projector at this price point. There are two 5 watt speakers, however, I'd recommend using external speakers if you really want to get that immersive experience that matches the big picture that this projector is capable of. So taking a quick look at the projector, you can see we have all of the buttons here that you would get on your remote control so that you can control it if something does happen to your remote. Taking a look at the back, we have two HDMI ports, one of them being eARC support. You also have a 12 volt trigger 
and a USB port, as well as an optical port and an RS-232 port. So one of the things that most impressed me about the X3000i is that it can be calibrated as it has color management options built in. The only negative for me is that I couldn't manually adjust the gamma curve. And I will say that before I get into the results that the overall black levels on this projector could be improved a little bit. You can change the overall gamma, but not the individual points on the curve itself. Now, I didn't spend a huge amount of time on getting the calibration of this projector perfect, as it's a loner and going back to BenQ, but I did at least want to give it a try so that I could get as much out of it with the limited time that I had with it. So first of all, for Rec. 709, the color temperature after the grayscale calibration produced a very nice result with very little adjustment. I did note that the blue was a little overtuned, which does make sense now knowing that there is an additional blue light being pumped in via the 4 LED light engine, but after adjustment, it was pretty good. The same went for the color management for the primaries and the secondaries, with overall things lining up pretty well. It did take me around four hours to calibrate the projector and the results were very nice and the accuracy and the colors were much improved with the skin tones. A quick shout out to my friend Leo who gave me some remote assistance during the calibration. My verdict after calibration is that in HDR mode for movies, we have a beautiful bright image that does suffer a little in the blacks. However, in my light controlled room, the image looks very nice, bright and vibrant with great color accuracy achieved with this level of calibration. I especially like the vividness of the colors and how bright the image is, even though, as I said, the blacks are not inky black, there does appear to be a nice dynamic range and watching a movie in here is quite enjoyable. So as this projector is designed as a home theater gaming projector, let's take a look at some of the demos. I'm using my gaming PC, which has an Intel i9-12900K CPU paired with an RTX 3080. So I could play most AAA titles in 4K with 60 Hertz. Let me know what you think down in the comments section of how these games look on the big screen. So who do I think that this projector is for? Hands down, this is probably the best gaming projector that I've ever tested. There is no noticeable input lag at all. And after calibration, it just looks sensational on the big screen with the first person shooters, the car racing sims and the third person adventure games. Most people who want to game in a home theater are also into watching movies as well. So if you like to do both, this projector is no slouch when it comes to movie performance either. With the vast array of calibration controls and with the additional filter to extend the color space, the image coming from this LED projector for movies is unbelievable when you consider the price. So I think that this projector is suited to someone who likes gaming as well as watching movies on the big screen. For me, I just can't look past it for the price of what you get for 2000 US dollars or 3299 Australian dollars. You do have those manual zoom and focus as a trade-off from the electronic zoom and focus, and there isn't any lens shift either, so you will have to aim and angle the projector and plan properly prior to installation. But if I was in the market for a gaming projector, I would certainly be putting this at the top of my list. Even for watching movies, I have really enjoyed my time with this projector. However, sadly for me, it's going back to BenQ and I would like to thank them for sending it in to me for review. I very much appreciate it. I will have links down in the description to this projector, so check them out if you're interested. If you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, make sure you smash the like button for me and consider subscribing to see my future content. Let me know what you think down in the comments section and I'll be sure to read every single comment. But 
That's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now.